Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining the channel and uh, hope you're all well. Uh, today on my bench, I have a Techniques M270X. This is a cassette deck, a direct drive, two motor uh, cassette deck. And it has SX heads. I don't think it's a three head. It doesn't look like it's a three head. It's a two head deck, but it's, it's, um, it's got a lot of nice features. Uh, let me show you here. Um, it's all logic controlled, solenoid control over the over the, the play deck. Um, it's got a vacuum fluorescent display for your peak hold meters. It has Dolby Dolby DBX, uh, which is a nice touch, and it's a really nice slim unit for its for a cassette deck. It's probably only how how high is this thing? What are we measuring here? We're measuring four inches from the table. And, uh, you know, the face plate's only nine centimeters high. So it's a nice compact unit. Um, it's really uh, nicely built. Techniques really went out on this. And I was looking at the, at the service manual. This is really a sophisticated, complex machine. Um, wait till we get into the insides of it. But um, the problem, this was brought to me by one of my clients. The problem, he says, is he uh, put a tape in and then closed the door. He felt a crunch feeling as he shut the door. And uh, he was afraid he damaged something inside. And I had a look in here, and yes, there was some damage. I don't understand how it happened, but we're going to have a look at it and maybe how we can fix it. Um, I was just, before I started the camera, I was looking at this door to make sure that it is um, maybe it's out of position or something. It looks like it might be a little bit crooked. This door is a little bit cockeyed. Uh, that might be the cause of the problem. We might have to investigate why this door is sitting weird or maybe it's just loose. I don't know yet. We're going to get into that. Another thing I just did before I turn the camera on is I re-glued the the aluminum cap on the knob here, it was loose, it was falling off, so I put some epoxy and it's going to let that set. So that's good. Um, yeah, so let's have a little look inside here as to the damage I found. All right, so let's have a look here. Uh, i get my screwdriver in here somehow. Take a look at this on the er erase head. This guide posts are completely mangled and bent out of position. They should be uh, back down. Something on the cassette hooked on that, or maybe the cassette was too low when the door was shut and it got caught on that. It was sticking up and uh, yeah, it, look at the carnage. Thankfully the record playback head is okay. It's just dirty, uh, but this one's fine. I don't think it's bent, but we'll have a close look at that. Uh, mainly concerned about how we're going to bend this back into shape and align it. Aligning is going to be a little bit of a treat. I might have to get a straight edge along the, the tape path here and align this, these guides to that to a straight edge. So we'll see what we can do about this. So another thing he told me that uh, the person he bought this deck off of um, had done a recap on it. Now I'm kind of, he was kind of wondering why, I am too, I'm wondering why somebody would do a recap on a cassette deck. Uh, Capacitors and cassette decks is really not an issue unless it's a really high hours unit or it's been cooked or it's really old. This one's not really that, all that old, uh, you know, because it has metal tape capabilities and it's got DBX noise reduction. It's a fairly late model deck. Um, this is probably released around the same time that the... Um, CD uh, drives were coming out, the CD players, back in the early 80s, 90s. And uh, so I don't think this is that old that it needs a recap. But we'll have a look at it, see if it was done properly, and make sure everything uh, is good that way. Um, still concerned about this door. Why is it moving around like this? I don't know what that is. I'm going to get into this. I'm going to take this cover off. And we'll have a look at this. Maybe there's something wrong with the 
the hinge mechanism here. Maybe one side is out of alignment or it's bent to make that cassette drop lower than it should. So let me get the cover off here. I'm wondering, does this come off? Yes, it does. Okay. Everything seems normal. Except we now have an alignment problem with our heads, so we might have to go in and redo all these adjustments. I don't know what else was bent here. Maybe the head's completely out of position, so we'll have to do that. The vacuum fluorescent display it is lit, but it's kind of dim. I'm wondering, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, I'm hoping that's not going to be a problem with the capacitors, because usually when the capacitors fail in the, in the power supply for the vacuum fluorescent display, then you start getting your dim, your dim uh, display. So let's have a, take the cover off and have a look. All right. Let me get this cover off. very clean so yeah like I said it's a quite a complex machine we've got uh, power supply and Syscon here this board here uh, what does this say right channel level DC power supply L filter left channel VCA channel muting this looks like it's all signal control for maybe recording. I'm not sure. And yes, somebody has done a recap on this. It's interesting. I don't know why they would do that. It's not going to make much difference in the sound quality on something like this. A little fuse bank here. It's all secondary fuses, I'm assuming. Quite a large deck mechanism, deck drive. Probably what I'm going to have to do is remove this cassette drive mechanism so I can actually get at these heads without the door in the way. Uh, I think once I pull out the mechanism, I can remove the door. And uh, that'll free up all this space in the front here. And then I can actually get in here and, and start looking at what happened and get some straight edges and see how it aligns. It's very nicely built. It's a good design. It's a nice design. And somebody put the time and money into putting new caps in this thing. It's interesting. One thing that caught my attention right away was this sticker here in the back. It says AC220 volts. And it says this unit is preset for use on 220 volts. Make sure your AC house voltage is the same before using. Um, change necessary. And it does have the voltage selector on here. And it does come with... Um, you can, oh, hang on. It does come with um, different taps for different voltages. We've got 110, 125, 220, 240, 50, 60 hertz. And a safety certification sticker here. It looks like it's from Europe. I'm not sure. Anybody recognize that? Um, but this is not a North American v um, deck. This is from Europe. 
I'm pretty sure. So now it's set to 110. Um, it'll work on 110, but that's not ideal. We, we typically in North America, we have 120 volts or higher. So I'm just going to set this to, uh, 125 volts. That way it won't be stressed. Feeding 120 volts into 110 volt appliance, you're overstressing the power supply and the uh, transformer. And if I turn it to 120, the 125 volt tap, it, uh, goes a little more easier on it. And another thing I noticed is this uh, power cord has the European colors. Comes in here and it's got the brown and blue for your hot and neutral. That's something we don't use in North America. We don't use those two colors. We use uh, black and white. Doesn't really matter the color of the cable though, but it looks like to me somebody took the end and hacked it off and put one of these uh, hardware store plugs on which I really don't like so what I'm probably going to do is I'll probably just replace the power cord with a brand new polarized North American standard and wire it in and then I'll make sure that this wiring is up to North American standards uh, should be see they have here they have um both the line and the neutral switched on this switch. I don't think that's a North American standard, but they're doing it. And then we have some of these reefer caps here. I don't know if these are reefer or not. Across the line caps. I might have to take a good look at these. These are known for cracking and uh, shorting out. So I'll have a good look at these two caps. Replace them if necessary. Put a new line cord in. And uh, yeah, we'll get it set up. Voltage selectors down there, it's all, and then your multi tap transformer. But aside from that, it looks good. Here's a look at the inside this uh, plug end. It's really, I really don't like these things. Um, there's really no, there's no strain relief for pulling on the wires, they're completely dependent on the, uh, the screw terminal holding it in. And uh, it's not this, this one wasn't done bad. It was done pretty good. I don't know who did it, but I'm just not a big fan of these. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to, well, I'm just going to take it off and replace it with a molded plug. All right. So I got a new power cord in. Uh, looks pretty good. I got the new capacitors in. These are XY rated 400, 500 volts. Um, these are reefer caps. And the reason I changed these is because they have a failure. Um, let's have a look at this one. If I can get it out of here, a little condom. I don't know if you can see that, but the, um, the cast resin is failing. It cracks. And um, the failure mode on these things is the resin cracks, allows moisture to get in. And once moisture gets into these capacitors, they can go leaky and start to short. And these will explode uh, if they're across the line. These capacitors weren't across the line. They were across the power switch. But I removed them and replaced them anyways because these are failing. Uh, you can see the cracking on the sides. I don't know if you can see it on this one. This one's not as bad. But you can see the cracking, the crack lines. Maybe it's out of focus, I don't know. But they're gone now. So if you go look on EEV blog, David Jones has a, a little thing about these reefer caps and uh, how they fail. And uh, usually if you see, if you come across them, I just get rid of them. Any equipment I find them in, I pull them out and replace them. I got the tape drive removed from the chassis. It's pretty simple. Take the faceplate off. There's three screws on top, three screws on the bottom, and the faceplate just pulls off, comes off as a unit. Now, the 
drive mechanism itself was pretty easy too. There's two screws in the bottom. Um, you can see them here, one and one. And then there's a screw up top right here. Take those three screws out and the whole thing just lifts out. And then I'm gonna disconnect the heads from the printed circuit board so that it gives me a little bit more room. All I wanna do is I wanna remove the front door assembly or the cassette tray, if you wanna call it. There's four screws, one in each corner. I'll take these out. And we should be able to remove the cassette door. out as one piece. Let's put this aside. Now we got full access to our heads. I might as well remove this plate because I can give everything underneath a good inspection too while I'm here. So let's take this plate out. Four more screws. Strip screw here. One more. And this will have the lamp attached to it. Let's get this out of the way. this head. Wow. I'm going to have to bend this back a bit because I can't get this plate out. Scratched it up too. I didn't like doing that. All right. So there's our lamp. It's an LED. And we can look at the tires, make sure everything's clean. But we want to look at this head. Let's zoom in here and see what we can see. I think it's just a simple matter of, it's very, no, it's, I think it's just a simple matter of bending this back without snapping anything, of course. So, okay, I'm going to have to align this somehow because this is way out of whack. I can see underneath it's bent in, in a little bit. I don't know if I can massage this out it's going to take some finessing what i'm going to need is a straight edge here i don't know if this will be suitable but we're going to have to align the tape path using a straight edge like this So yeah, I gotta build, I gotta bend this another millimeter or so, just according to what the straight edge is showing me. Usually they have these uh, attached to the side of the head with a little spot weld, but I don't see that here. It is not looking like what I might have to do is bond that to the head somehow once I get it in the right position. I think I'm pretty much 
there now. I'm getting closer. You can see the, uh, the tape track or yeah, the path. Okay, I can see the tape path from right here. Yeah, it's so close right now. It's maybe a tenth of a millimeter out. It's a problem with cassette. There's really nothing to measure to. Everything is contained within the, uh, the cassette shell. And okay, so I got a post alignment post here on this head and that's what I'm going by right now and I'm going by what does on the pinch roller and if I line up those two I am pretty much lined up here too let me get some uh, Thing I want to see is height. too high. Okay, that's loaded. And I am still seeing It's still, it's still catching here. These two guides here guide the cassette into the position. Of course, it has to be lined up with the capstan. So when those two, when those are lined up and then the cassette goes on, I can feel it's binding on that head right there. It's hitting, this is too high. So I have to lower this quite a bit. Because if it's just going to be too high, it's just going to get snagged again, and it's just going to get caught. So I just want to bend it down and see. I want this to be free. Where are we here? Okay. It's still catching. But it's better. It's still catching. Okay, I've got it bent back into a position here, but we have to be critical of these two different measurements. This one here is the tape heads, how they align with each other. And I want to make sure before I do anything else that I get this guide, these guide posts back in the right position. So I'm trying to just line this up the best I can by eye. And I think I got it pretty darn close. Pretty darn close here. But I also have to make sure that it's the right height. And I think I got it too high right now because it is still... Let's see if I can do this. 
I can still feel it catching on the cassette shell. And I think it has to go down more. So I'm going to bend this down a little bit more. still catching. It's catching on the uh, playback head too. Maybe it's not going down all the way. Where's my mechanisms for this? Shouldn't be loose either. This is critical for head alignment is you want these heads to be in alignment when they go up and down. But this is flopping around here. Maybe there's more to this than I realize. I might have to take, um, I really don't want to take this whole thing apart. I lost the pad from somewhere. There's a lot of play back here. I think I should shim this. See that play? Even when the heads are in position, there shouldn't be any play. That's quite a bit. Yeah, that's, I don't know if somebody's had this apart and they maybe assembled it wrong or yeah, I don't know. I'll have to go look at the service manual and see. They have exploded parts diagrams for the me the mechanical assembly. When these heads protrude into the into the cassette shell, uh, their their alignment is critical, and there shouldn't be any play movement like that. If you know what I mean. Something is not right here. But then, hey, maybe they made it that way and it all works when it's done. See, when I load the heads this way, they still, is this, this here? Hmm. A head scratcher for sure. Okay, well, we've got a couple problems here then. We have this problem of loading the cassette. Okay, I'm clearing clearing the erase and playback head now. Then I got this bent down too far. Bring it back up a little. I wonder if these posts are out of position, maybe. They can't be. Test it.
Let me go have a look at the uh, exploded parts diagrams here for the mechanical assembly and I see if this thing's assembled right or not. It shouldn't be that much play. Okay, so what I did is I went through the diagram and I checked out all these components. Let's see here, I got a pointy stick. Um, this assembly here is the uh, carrier for the heads. And this is the piece that goes up and down. That's this mechanical piece here, this one that goes up and down. And it is low, uh, well, it is, uh, it is, um, positioned by three things. There's this here, M37, M85. This is a little plastic pillow and it's got a ball bearing in the middle. And then there's one on the other side here. Where is it? There's one here. Yeah, there's two of them. One here and one here. And that goes behind the plate and that positions the plate up against the frame. And then on top of the plate, there is another ball bearing M85 and it's held down by spring M69 and that is this here. You can see it here, it's pressing down, there's a ball bearing under there and that what holds the assembly positioned. It's not really holding very good though. It's like it can rock. I don't think there's anything bent. But anyways, I went through and I looked this little foam pad did not come from here. I think it came from a cassette and it was the, um, you know, the little foam pad that's in here. See this little foam, little fiber or felt. It's not foam, it's felt. Yeah. And I found this in here somewhere. It fell out. So what's going on here? Did something get jammed in the mechanism and cause the head to not retract fully? Uh, I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to align this the best I can with the straight edge. And then I'm going to bond this, uh, these guide posts to the side of the head because they're floating. What I'm going to do is to mix up a little small batch of epoxy and I'm just going to put like a microscopic drop in there and just pinch it until it holds. And then that's going to be its final position after I get it aligned. And then once we do that, we can do the head alignment. Put it all back together and do a head alignment. Uh, clean the heads. They're good. Uh, not much else to say about this mechanism. It's a nice unit. It's heavy. There's lots going on here. Here's the direct drive motor for the capstan. And there's a lot of electronics under this board. I think it's all servo. Uh, a few heavy solenoids. It's a heavy unit. Somebody's been in here changing caps too. So I can see brand new uh, Nichicons gold in here. So they went to town on this thing, spent a bit of money. So let's see if we can get it fixed up so it works. Okay, so I got it positioned as about as best as I can get here. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna mix up a drop of epoxy. I don't need much. I just need enough to bond that, bond that uh, guide to the head. That should be good. Mix this up. I don't think the erase head is quite as critical as the uh, record playback head. It, it's going to affect the tape path somewhat, but it's not going to be uh, that critical because it is adjustable and it is, from what I can see here, it's pretty much in the location where it needs to be. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit of adhesive and we're going to bond that, that guide to the head just so it won't move anymore. Okay, just gonna use a toothpick. 
get a very small amount on here. Let's see if I can do this. It's going to be hard to do around the camera. I've got way too much on here. I think that's good. Now I just want to check one more time. I think we're still good. Just gonna clamp this. have that and then I'll just wipe off the excess check the alignment one more time before it sets up So you don't look too bad right there. Can I check this side too? That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna let that set up and then we're gonna reassemble all of the, the deck and then we'll get on with our alignment. So the, um, the epoxy is all set up now and it's holding might not look very nice, but the main thing is it does not catch on the cassette anymore. You can load it. It's got about two millimeters there. And uh, it doesn't catch anymore when I slide it on these two uh, rails. These two, these two loading rails here, they help load the cassette into position. And then this is uh, this post here kind of locks the, the cassette shell into one final position so it doesn't move around. And it looks like I got plenty of, nothing's binding, nothing's touching. It looks all good. So I'm gonna put it back together. One last thing to look at before we put it all together is this uh, mechanism. I'm gonna make sure that nothing's bent and out of position or worn out. This all looks good. I think it's working as it's supposed to on that side. This side here, same thing. I don't see anything bent. There's a split, um, this plastic is split here, but I don't think that matters. These posts here have to be straight too, because uh, this one here is a little bit off. No, this one just looks pretty good. I think it's good. These posts are straight. I don't see any alignment problems. The frame itself isn't bent. Maybe a little bit here. Uh, no, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's okay. I'm going to put that back in. I don't see any problems with the, um, the tray. So let's put that back together with the uh, rest of the unit. And... Oh dear, look at this. I'm going to have to do some more gluing here. I have to get my epoxy out again and fix this back up. Yeah, I'll get that glued. And then this part here. I think this part comes apart. I can actually... This will be good because I can clean underneath it. It's got a lot of, a little bit of dust and stuff in here. So I'm gonna clean this, clean the inside of the glass, just make sure it's perfect before it goes back together. Um, anyways, enough of that. Let's look at this. Um, 
I'll get, reposition the camera, we'll have a look at it. I'm still scrutinizing this loading of the cassette here. I just want to make sure that we're not missing something that's obvious or damaged. So when it closes, I think you can see the cassette will jump up probably about a half a millimeter or so. And the two reels will align with the hubs. So right about here, it slides up on those two posts. I remember I was pointing out these, these two angled posts on the bottom, they, they're alignment posts. And they align the shell, the cassette shell for the machine. And as it closes, it kind of pulls everything into alignment. And then it snaps in. And it seems to be everything's working good. I don't see any problems or issues. And I don't see any clearance issues between the bottom of the cassette shell and the heads. So I think we're good. I don't understand why it would catch on the head like that unless it was something that was brewing a long time. Yeah, so I think it's all good. So I'm just going through cleaning these boards and giving them a good inspection. Um, I did the power supply. I don't know if you can see the difference in contrast between the two. This one's nice and white. The lettering and this one's all dingy and yellow. That's the flux on there. That's a coating of flux. When it goes through the wave soldering it leaves a coating on everything. And then the previous tech that went in here and did the recap um, left resin or rosin everywhere. So I'm just going through and cleaning it and giving it a good inspection. Um, the person before me did go through and solder up some bad solder connections, some bad crack joints like right here on this transistor they were cracked so he went and soldered that or she, whoever it was. But they went through and did that, that's great. But I also want to make sure it's clean and I give it another inspection. I found a couple more transistors here that were, you know, kind of scary looking. So I soldered them back up and I still have to go through this board here. So uh, just finding a few things. This, uh, there's a lot of capacitors on this board that were changed out. So I expect, see it's really dirty connections, really dirty. So I'm gonna clean all that up. There is a spot here where there's seven pads it looks like somebody desoldered something. I don't know what those pads are before. Let me see if I can flip it over. Oh, it looks like wire connector for something. Whoever did this put a lot of time and money into it. You see all these blue capacitors? These are all film caps. It looks like somebody took out the originals and replaced them with these film caps. Because those don't look uh, factory original for techniques. And then there's all the uh, electrolytics as well. So somebody put a lot of money into this. Uh, let's hope this deck is really worth it. Should be. It's a nice deck. So what I've been doing is doing a few alignments here and playing some tapes and I noticed it's kind of struggling with the um, take up reels struggling a little bit and I'm looking at this uh, tire here inside and uh, I can see it's glazed over so I've been cleaning it with a little bit of alcohol here and the q-tip coming back dirty as you can see, it's picking up some dirt from the tire. But it's not really taking that glazing off. I think I'm just going to hit it with some rubbery new. And uh, see how that goes. See how dirty that is? I'm just going to keep cleaning this until it stops giving me dirt. And then I'll hit it with some rubbery new. And then it saves me from disassembling the deck again. I should have actually had a look at this carefully when I had it apart. Because I probably have tires here. I probably just could have slapped a new one on. But, uh, well, we'll go with this. The tire is not bad. It's just, it just seems to be glazed over a bit. I think this cleaning is helping. They call it a direct drive deck, but there's a direct, there's a motor here with a wheel on it. And the tire rubs on that wheel, and then it transfers the rotational motion to the two hubs, 
depending on what mode it's in. And it appears there's a clutch there. Sorry, I got the test tape going and it's an awfully annoying noise. And depending on uh, the speed, I guess there's a little clutch in there too to keep to help it have it slip. I'm not seeing a clutch though. It just seems like it's directly coupled. There has to be a clutch because uh, as the tape reel fills up, its speed changes. So there has to be some kind of give in the system to allow it to slip. If I stall the wheel, then it shuts down. See? Got a fair bit of dirt off there. I'm just going to try some rubbery new. Let's see if I can reach in there with this. Seems to be seems to be working. It seems like it's uh, not slipping anymore. When I reach in there, the rubber renew, it's not. When I first touched it with the alcohol, it was slipping. So now it's not slipping. A little bit of staining coming off that wheel. So I think I'm going to leave that. I think it's a lot better. So this is the dirt the alcohol took off. This is the dirt the rubber renew took off. I think it's working good now. Let's try this out. I think it's a lot better. So I've got the uh, head alignment as good as it's going to get. Uh, I've tried a number of different tapes and it's all they all confirm each other so they're all good. So I'm just going to lock this. I'm just going to lock the adjustment screw with some paint and we're collar done. And then we'll give her a test to listen. This paint is kind of runny. Just got to get in there and I'll put another coat on when that dries. Now we need to do the uh, race head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out one of my old tapes and I'm going to test and see how it erases. If we have any problems with the race head not working on one or one or the other tracks, I might have to do an adjustment. But other than that, it looks like it's going to be already in line so I'll just leave that I didn't touch the erase head alignment all I did was I uh, repositioned and reattached the uh, guide posts I've got some crusty pots here so I'm gonna give it a spray with some neutral Let's see if this helps Can't get it in there. If I could get it in, no jokes, please. Let's see here. And I forgot my cloth, of course. What? It helped quite a bit. The output's a little scratchy too. I'll do the output as well. I 
that's a lot better. Okay, so I'll reassemble this. Um, my plan was to record some test tones on this old tape, play it back, and um, erase them, and see if the uh, erase head is working properly. If it's aligned properly, it should re erase both tracks. Recorded a tone, and I've gone over and erased it. Here's the erased portion. Crank the volume. There's no hint of a tone anymore. And I recorded that tone at quite a high level too, so that uh, it would bleed through if it had any chance, but it's not It's not doing it. Sounds good. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to lock that erase head in place, and then we're going to call this done. Uh, I've also adjusted the speed. It wasn't very far out, maybe 1%, so I tweaked that a little bit. It's ready to go back to the customer. All right, so that's all I'm going to do for this one today. Um, I'm going to give it back to the owner, and I'm sure you'll be pleased to see it back in working order. Um, kind of an unusual deck because uh, a couple things. Usually cassette decks are not this short, so it's a very compact design. I like the, uh, I like the uh, drive mechanism. It's well built. Direct drive. It's stable. I was listening to some tapes and... Uh, the wow and flutter is pretty much non-existent on this thing. Uh, it's a good, solid cassette deck, and it's well designed and it's well built too. Um, not often we get to see European uh, spec equipment in uh, North America or in Canada, um, but you know it's kind of common, I think, for a lot of manufacturers to make different products aimed at different markets. And this is probably one of them. I don't know if this was ever released in North America, this MX uh, or M270X. So, it's, yeah, it's a nice, nice unit. All right, so I'm going to end it there. I'll take care and uh, hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.